Hi, good morning everyone. My name is Anna. I'm so glad to be here with you all and I hope everyone is safe and doing well wherever you are. I am just so excited to welcome you all to the very first ever J-Curve Solutions on stream. Now, Derek De La Pena of J-Curve Solutions will be joining me in just a little bit. But for now, I do want to talk about NetSuite purchasing, sales and inventory before we get down to the technicalities. Manage inventory automatically. Reduce handling costs. Optimize cash flow. This all sounds great, right? Now, many factors do go into inventory management, but the bottom line is you need to make sure that you have enough inventory on hand at the right place at the right time to meet your customer's demand. Whether that demand is to meet your customer service level of expectations or to supply a work order in your manufacturing facility. NetSuite offers many native tools and features to help you make this happen including tracking inventory in multiple locations, also safety stock, reorder points, cycle accounts, demand planning, and distribution requirements planning. NetSuite offers many native tools and features to help you make this happen, including tracking inventory in multiple locations, safety stock, reorder points, cycle counts, demand planning, and distribution requirements planning. With all this said, I will now let Derek demonstrate NetSuite purchasing sales and inventory in action. Isn't that right, Derek? That's right, Anna. What you've said is exactly what NetSuite purchasing sales and inventory does. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Hi, everyone. I'm Derek. I'm your demo specialist for today, and I'm going to be showing you how to use NetSuite in processing transactions for warehouse and distribution entities. I am sharing um, process flows for procure to pay process and an order to cash process. These are the leading uh, process flows for uh, WD companies. For the procure to pay or purchasing process, we start with purchase order. Once we receive the um, items or services from your vendor, we create an item receipt transaction in NetSuite. The item receipt transaction also increases the quantity of your items in the system. After we receive the item, we record a vendor bill. The vendor bill recognizes or records the liability to the vendor. And then of course, once we pay our vendor, we create a bill payment transaction. As for the order to cash or revenue process, we start with a sales order. When we deliver the items to your customers, we create an item fulfillment. Similar with the item receipt, the item fulfillment affects your quantity. This reduces our quantity on hand. After we deliver the item, we create an invoice transaction. The invoice recognizes your receivable and then income from the sale. And then of course, we record or collect the customer payment. Let me just share my NetSuite screen. Right. So, um, before we create transactions in NetSuite, we must first have master data in NetSuite. Master data means your item data, your customer data, and then your vendor data. For this demo, we have already created the items and then records for you. In this example, we have Mac Pro 2020, and then it's classified or as a lot numbered inventory item. In some companies, they don't track lot numbers. We can also have a regular inventory item. So inventory item and lot numbered inventory item. Both of the item records, we can track the quantity per location or warehouse. Let me just open a customer record. So customer record, um, you can create uh, customer records in NetSuite via CSV import or create it manually. Once you have created the customer uh, record, you'd also be able to track what are the transactions that you have for this particular customer. If you go to the sales sub tab and then transactions, you would see that you have created an invoice, sales order, and an item fulfillment. 
if your customer has multiple addresses, we can um, add multiple address in here and then classify one or two as um, the default shipping and then default billing address. If you go to the customer 360, you'd be able to see the customer scorecard, the open transactions, and then um, the 12 month sales as well. Let's open the vendor record, ABC Technologies. Same with the customer record, we can also track what are the transactions that we have for the vendor. That's under financial. You scroll down and then we have transaction. What I'm showing you right now are just the standard fields in NetSuite. If you do need to have more fields in NetSuite, we can create custom fields. So those are your master data. Now for the purchasing transactions, um, I have already created the transaction for you. Let me just open number, purchase order number 2476. All right. So purchase order number 2476, um, you would see at the top status is fully, uh, fully built. Now, if you want to know uh, what are the transactions that you have already created for this PO, you go to the related records. Under the related records, you would see that you have already created item receipt and also a vendor bill. Now, if I go to the items, you would see on the purchase order, I ordered three items, MacBook Pro, iPad Pro, and an Apple charger. So let me just open, let's say we have already received the item, we create an item receipt. Okay. You would notice that the MacBook Pro and an iPad Pro, there's an inventory detail in here. If I click on that, it would show the lot numbers and also the quantity per lot number. So our MacBook Pro and an iPad Pro both are lot numbered item. But as for the Apple charger, it doesn't have any lot number. And then of course, the quantity received from the vendor. If we go to actions and then jail impact, the beauty of NetSuite is that every time that we create a transaction, uh, it usually affects our jail impact or our financials. So in the case of an item receipt, it debited or inventory and then credited a clearing account for the liability. Okay, so let's go back to the purchase order and then let's now open the vendor bill. Okay. So we've created a vendor bill for the items that we have received. If you go to actions and then jail impact, would debit the clearing account that we credited earlier in the item receipt and then it would credit your accounts payable. Going back to the vendor bill, you would see that the status is paid in full. So this uh, vendor bill, we have already paid the vendor. You scroll down and then you go to the related records and then you would see the bill payment transaction. You can right click, open link in a new tab Go to actions and then jail impact. It debited your AP and then credited your bank account. So if you go back to our bill payment transaction, there's a link to the vendor bill. And then from the vendor bill, you go to related records. There's a link as well back to the PO. So from just opening the PO, you'd be able to um, navigate to the receipt bill and then if you open the bill it would open the bill payment there is a complete process flow and that the transactions are linked together by the system that's the purchasing um, process 
Now, let me just open um, sales order number 392. 74. Okay. So, Octagon ordered iPad, MacBook, and an Apple charger. So we go to related records again, and then we would see item fulfillment and then invoice. We can open in a new tab, those two transactions. Okay. Item fulfillment means we have delivered the item, we have shipped the items. And then if you go to actions and then jail impact, it debited your cost of goods sold and then credited your inventory account. If we open the invoice, go to actions, and then jail impact, it would debit your receivable and then credit your sales revenue account. Right. So on the item fulfillment, um, since two of our items are lot numbered, if we open the inventory detail, we can also specify for this particular item fulfillment, what would be the um, lot number of the item that we are selling? And then, of course, the quantity that we have delivered to the customer. And then, of course, we don't have that feature for Apple Charger. This is a regular inventory item. Now, let's go back to the sales order and then let's open the invoice. Unlike the uh, vendor bill earlier, for this particular invoice, the status is still open, meaning we haven't yet received uh, the payment from the customer. There's a link at the top, accept payment. Okay. So we specify the bank account that was um, credited or increased, and then of course our invoice, and then we save it. All right, so when we go to actions and then jail impact, it would debit your bank account and then credit your receivable account so that's basically it for the purchasing side and then the um sales uh, cycle now for wd of course we want to keep track of our inventory quantities so for that one we can generate standard reports in it let me just log in let's say using um, inventory manager If I go to reports and then inventory, I can generate this physical inventory worksheet. This physical inventory worksheet shows us the quantity on hand per item. And then we can also specify for which location. If I want to see uh, on hand quantities under Sydney location, I can just click Sydney in here click on refresh and then the quantity on hand on this would pertain to Sydney only. Now, you might want to know um, what are the transactions that make up that quantity on hand. So if I open the 140 for the uh, iPad Pro 2020, I just have to click on it and then it would open the inventory activity detail. The inventory activity detail would show you the inventory increases and decreases. And then, of course, the resulting balance after. From here, there are two item receipt, one for 100, one for 50. And then we sold or delivered um, 10 items. If you want to open the transaction, you can just click on the line. It would open the item receipt for you. From the report, uh, you can basically drill down to the actual transaction. 
That's it for today's G-Curve on stream. For questions and inquiries, refer to the contact details running on your screens and let's talk about your business. Until next time, thank you so much. Back to you, Anna. Wow, that was incredibly informative. Thank you so much, Derek, for helping us understand how NetSuite purchasing sales and inventory really works. And I really hope everyone got a lot out of it. Now, before we end, please don't forget to like our Facebook and LinkedIn pages, J-Curve Solutions. The link will be on your screen. And also stay tuned for more updates and also online engagements just like this one. Thank you so much for joining us today and we'll see you again next time. Goodbye.